Hi, we're going to talk about London dispersion forces. Now in some books you'll see it um, as induced dipole, induced dipole, meaning we create a dipole, um, but in AP chemistry uh, we call it London dispersion forces. And you'll see a lot of classrooms and books that call it London dispersion forces. Old books will also sometimes call them van der Waal forces, but you don't see that as much anymore. Okay, this is the weakest of all our intermolecular forces, but don't be fooled. It still can play um, significantly into IMF, intermolecular forces. Here's the official definition. It is a dipole, so remember uneven distribution of electrons. You have a partial negative, partial positive side. It's a dipole created by uneven distribution of electrons around a nucleus of an atom or a molecule. So this could be either looking at groups of molecules or groups of atoms or atoms and molecules together. And let me give you an example. Um, I'm going to use hydrogen gas. So I have H2, and let's say that we have two molecules that are going to come next to each other. Let's do our Lewis dot structure. Um, so hydrogen, is very, very nonpolar. The hydrogens each have identical um, electronegativity, and so they're going to share perfect. The two electrons that are in between these two hydrogens will spend equal amount of time on each side of the atom. They share perfectly. Now, a London dispersion force is where randomly the electrons are moving inside of that molecule. Um, so let's say I've got my hydrogen, hydrogen, my hydrogen, hydrogen. Um, and I'll use my hands to describe this. So I have electrons that are moving randomly, and then just out of randomness, the two electrons both go to one side. Well, that's going to create a partial negative. By default, this is going to be a partial positive. And because those electrons randomly go to this side, um, so it would be right here, randomly go to this side, have a partial negative, the electrons that are just orbiting, you know, doing their sharing equally on this side, they're going to be repelled because I have two electrons right here. The electrons are going to be repelled onto this side. And so you have your partial negative, and by default, because the electrons randomly end on this side, repel the electrons here so they go over here, you have a partial positive, a partial negative, and for just a second, oh, they attract and it's gone. I say they kiss, they kiss and it's gone. And the electrons go back to sharing equally. That's a London dispersion force. Uh, it is for just a moment, we have created a dipole. A dipole has been induced because those electrons randomly came on this side, had a high density of electrons, so partial negative. It induced, created a dipole in the neighboring molecule. The electrons were repelled and so you got a partial positive for just a second, attract, it's gone. So London dispersion, there you have it. Now, a couple of notes on this. All molecules have London dispersion forces. So if you ever have to list what intermolecular forces are in a molecule, right off, you know London dispersion. All molecules have London dispersion forces. Um, so if I look at water, here's my H2O. I know that that is hydrogen bonding because it's hydrogen directly bonded to oxygen. Um, it's a polar molecule, so it's going to have dipole, dipole, and Everything has London dispersion. So water has all three of the intermolecular forces. Now, a little side note. Nonpolar molecules, like my hydrogen gas here, um, they only have London dispersion forces. So for example, let's say that I have a carbon tetrabromide. This is a nonpolar molecule. Um, I didn't draw all of the lone pairs, the three lone pairs on each of the bromines, pretend they're there. Um, we have equal opposite forces that are pulling in equal opposite directions, cancels out the polarity, very nonpolar molecule. Um, so that only has London dispersion. It doesn't have hydrogen bonding. There's no hydrogen bonded to fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, fun. It's not polar, so it's not dipole, dipole. The only thing it has is London dispersion forces. So important note, nonpolar molecules only have London dispersion forces and all molecules have London dispersion forces. Okay, they're temporary and instantaneous. So in contrast, hydrogen bonding and dipole dipole, those are permanent, is a function of the electronegativity of the entire molecule. Those lone pairs make that water partial negative, partial positive, always. That's permanent. However, 
with London dispersion, it's just the randomness of the electrons moving that you get a high density on one, induces a dipole on the other, they attract and then it's gone. So these are temporary and instantaneous. It just depends on the movement of the electrons. Um, it's a momentary, so this blends in with temporary and instantaneous, momentary Coulombic attraction. It's that partial negative attracted to that partial positive. Um, there's your Coulombic, Coulombic <laughs> excuse me, attraction. Um, the two charges, the Q's attracting divided by distance. Um, okay, so there's the generalization of London dispersion. And if you're like in a general chemistry class um, or maybe a 1010, an 1110 class, that's where you're going to stop. You get into a general chemistry 1210, 1220, AP chemistry, honors chemistry, you're going to learn one more really important fact about London dispersion forces. Here it is. London dispersion forces increase as you increase surface area of a molecule. Now, um, I will tell my students, how do you know if the surface area is bigger? Okay, number one, size is going to be actually the atomic radius. Let's write that down. So you're going to look at atomic radius. Another really quick way to look is number of electrons. How many electrons does that atom have? Um, or the molar mass. Look at the molar mass of the whole molecule. How big is that molecule? And that will give you an idea of the surface area. Um, so if you increase surface area, you increase the London dispersion forces. And here's the reason why. It's easier to polarize the molecule. Now that word, and I wrote it right down here, is a favorite buzzword. You know how um, there are certain words that professors love. Well, AP chemistry and professors love the word pols um, polarizability, polarizable. What that means is that it's easy to force, induce that dipole, force all the electrons to one side of a big molecule, creating that partial negative and the partial positive. The bigger the molecule, think Coulomb, the bigger the molecule, the further away that electron is from the nucleus. So let's say I'm here at um, a second energy level compared to a sixth energy level. It's going to be a lot easier for, to induce a dipole, move those electrons from one side to the other because they're further from that positive nucleus. It's more easily polarized, becoming a polar molecule, having a dipole. Um, so a couple of notes that I put here for you. If you increase the size of the molecule, you increase the polarizability. Easier to move electrons to one side, easier to induce and create that dipole. Um, and that in turn increases the London dispersion forces. You're going to have more of those induced dipoles and the attraction, 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 attraction. Um, so it increases the London dispersion forces. Now, look for data. You need to be given data, um, data on this. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, if you're not given data, I want you to always follow the hierarchy of intermolecular forces. Hydrogen bonding is always number one. And then you have dipole dipole. Notice my shorthand. HB is hydrogen bonding. DD is dipole dipole. And then you have London dispersion forces. Strongest down to weakest. So if you are ranking the intermolecular forces of molecules, follow this hierarchy. The only time you won't follow that hierarchy is if you are given um, some data. So I want to give you a couple of examples. Okay, trick question that I've I've seen in. Um, in a workbook. Here it is. We have H2O, H2S, and H2SE. Okay, now if I asked you for the strongest intermolecular forces, you go, it's easy, water, because it has hydrogen bonding, the hierarchy, right? Now they all are polar molecules. Um, so I would say number one, Strongest, this is going to be number one, greatest intermolecular forces because of hydrogen bonding. And then I look at H2S and H2SE and the hydrogen sulfide um, and the hydrogen selenide. The hydrogen sulfide, I would say, has greater dipole-dipole because it has a greater electronegativity. It's going to be a smaller molecule, greater ability to attract electrons. So then I'd say this one's going to be number two because it has greater dipole-dipole which means this one would be the weakest. Now in reality, those all have um, London dispersion forces in them as well, but I use the hierarchy to rank them. Now here's the trick question. Which one 
has the greatest London dispersion forces. So you have to read that really, really carefully. Most students read it, oh, which one has the greatest intermolecular forces? That's not what it's asking. We are now going to ask, and I'll use this on a different color. So this is greatest IMF, okay, IMF. Now, I'm going to list greatest London dispersion forces. So if I'm looking at those, which one has the greatest London dispersion forces? It comes back to this. London dispersion forces increases with an increase of surface area. So how can I figure that out? Well, size as a molecule, molar mass will oftentimes, oftentimes indicate size. Hydrogen is going to be the same atomic radius and we increase atomic radius as you go down this group. Oxygen is smaller than selenium, which is smaller, sulfur, which is smaller than selenium. So the largest molecule is the H2S, which means this has the greatest LDF. Water will have the smallest LDF. So be careful on that. Be careful on that. Kind of a trick question. Are they asking for overall intermolecular forces, use the hierarchy, or are they saying, hey, look at London dispersion forces, and then you look at size. Now, if you have to write this out, why? You have to justify it. It is the hydrogen selenide is a larger molecule, so it's more easily polarizable, more easily polarizable um, to induce those dipoles, which means it has a greater London dispersion force. Okay. Let's do another one, and this time, we're going to look at data. Um, so, I'm going to give you these two without looking at data. Let's take um, an H2Br, oops, H2Br2 and an HBr4. Um, and let's say, predict which one has the highest boiling point. So you know that boiling point increases as London dispersion forces increase. The greater the attraction, those intermolecular forces, the greater the energy it takes to change phase from a liquid to a gas. Um, so I'm looking for intermolecular forces. Which one has the greatest intermolecular forces? That one has the greatest boiling point, highest boiling point. So I look at these, both of these, no hydrogen bonding because hydrogen isn't bonded to chlorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, so can't use that. Then I look at polarity. I go, oh, that's a polar molecule. It would look like this. You have hydrogen, hydrogen, bromine, bromine. Now, anytime those substituent atoms are not identical around the central atom, you've got a polar molecule. And bromine, that's going to be really quite electronegative, especially compared to hydrogen. So you're gonna have a partial negative on this side, partial positive. I go, oh, that one's got dipole, dipole. So I would predict that this has the highest boiling point. Remember I drew, I drew the carbon tetrabromide over here? That is nonpolar. They're the same substituents, and so even though the bond is polar, they pull in equal opposite directions, cancel out nonpolar molecules, they share electrons equally. So I would say just based on my hierarchy, this one has dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces this one only has London dispersion forces, I would predict that one has the highest boiling point. It has the greatest intermolecular forces. All right, here's where this gets pr um, tricky and AP loves it. Are you ready for it? Whoever's on the test committee right now, they really like this topic. Okay, they're going to give us data. The boiling point, I'll put it here, the boiling point for our CH2Br2 is 82.1 degrees C. The boiling point for the carbon tetrabromide, 189.7 degrees C. And now when students see that, it just tweaks their brains. Like, whoa, wait, this is nonpolar, only has London dispersion forces. How is it that that has a higher boiling point? Well, this we can say, right out of the gate. Because this has a higher boiling point, it must have greater intermolecular forces. Of course, the higher the boiling point, the greater the intermolecular forces. So right away, I can say this has the greatest IMF in comparison to this 82.1 degrees, the CH2Br2. This one must have greater intermolecular forces than this one. But the question is, why? 
because this is polar and has London dispersion and this only has London dispersion. It's right here, polarizability. The reason why this has greater intermolecular forces is that it is a large molecule, easily polarized, and so the London dispersion forces, those intermolecular forces are greater than the dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces of this one. AP loves that question. Now the only way you could give that justification is if you're given data. If you don't have data, you live by the hierarchy. Hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, London dispersion, in that order. If you're given data, and it usually will go against that hierarchy, your explanation is um, you have a large molecule and easily polarizable. Polarizable. There's that buzzword. It's easily polarizable. So the LDF creates greater intermolecular forces than the intermolecular forces in that CH2Br2. Nice. That's going to be the exception to the hierarchy. And it's the size of the molecule is easily polarizable. Easy to force the electrons on one side of the molecule, creates, induces that dipole um, little attraction for the London dispersion. It's gone, but it happens a lot in really big molecules. So London dispersion forces, good work. Have a great day. If you need to look up any other intermolecular forces, grab those videos. Thanks, bye.